Good afternoon from Nairobi. I'm here at the International Data Center Day celebration together with Rohan Patil. He's the sales director East Africa at Virgil. Hello, nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you, Akim. So we're celebrating here the International Data Center Day. Thanks to you, we have sponsored this whole nice industry gathering. What would you say are the current challenges and opportunities also taken into account the fast acceleration of AI in the industry? Sure, perfect. First of all, thanks for uh, thanks to ADCA for uh, allowing us to allowing this opportunity to be here and uh, you know participate in this uh, this celebrations, and uh, you know we we are really glad to be here. Uh, when it comes to like you know the the one of the bigger challenges like what what the industry as such is facing is is uh, you know there's there's been a bit of a slowdown in terms of the demand what we pers what we see mm -hmm. there has been announcements of the hyperscales coming in into or, or the large collocation facilities that are coming into the region out of uh, you know it's it's a, it's a vast region Africa mm -hmm. that that's a fact you know some regions are actually quite we are quite diverse some regions like South Africa or Nigeria are at a much faster uh, pace uh, of development than compared to say East Africa, yeah. and uh, one of the one of the key challenges that what we are discussing with the global uh, co-locators or hyperscalers is also the, the the cost to build in the country. So the regulatory framework needs to support uh, the data center builds through through possibly a tax incentives or you know duty breaks etc. So that you know they are uh, that it is easier for them to start building the data centers in, into this particular facility, uh, in, into this particular uh, requirement because the demand is there. The demand is there, but you know, from from the regulatory uh, framework, it, I would say that you know we have had some uh, some some slowdowns because of that. Okay. So it's important that the public and private partner work together, yeah. collaborate, and then. And, and then and then provide an incentive for the data center operators to mm -hmm. to be here because you know uh, from from the from the demands that we have seen and from the analysts like you know the data wherein uh, the data center demands are going to be mainly South Africa Nigeria Morocco uh, Egypt and in East Africa and Kenya you know Vertiv uh, has investment has done investments and has opened offices like us there are other other industry players also who are who are in the markets and then uh, the all the all the tick boxes are correct to have the right uh, demand coming into this market and uh, i believe the the regulatory frameworks in terms of the data privacy and also possibly uh, to do with the commercial of uh, commercial angle to it will be the trigger point to have all of these investments to realize into an actual execution uh, plan so when we look at the regular regulatory perspective would you say the technology is just too fast uh not really but you know when the, when like when it comes to the the data privacy acts yeah. okay that those need to be implemented in totality so that you know the real data center demand in these regions will will be uh, will be increasing because currently uh, the the like you know country like Kenya who has done uh, very good advancements into having the data privacy laws which are in place but that needs to happen all across wherein so that you know then then the regulatory framework becomes much stronger to have a requirement to have local data centers built in Africa for Africa. Mm. What do you say are the biggest opportunities for the continent? Uh, biggest opportunity is still, still the people. I think there's mm. like, you know, this continent all put together is a very vast geography and more than 1.3 billion people out of it, a lot of people are still underconnected and uh, a lot of young population which is hungry for data and, you know, the like, you know, social media and all of this yeah. advancement. And that uh, that being said, like you know, the the infrastructure is supporting. You know, with the amount of submarine cables that have landed on the shores of Africa in the last two years, that is uh, that, that that is really a, a good uh, move towards you know connecting all of these people. You just mentioned there is also a high demand from the people in Africa when we look at uh, connectivity and using services. Mm -hmm. But would you say that as of today, the digital the, the data centers are a crucial or critical? digital infrastructure upon? Yes, hundred percent, you know, see, because uh, currently like uh, for for the users to have the right and seamless experience in using some of these applications and some of this data, you know, currently, uh, as you can see, most of the like, some of the traffic or some of the data center or some of the applications are not hosted here, but they're hosted elsewhere. So there's a there's a latency that, you know, that does not give the greatest of user experiences to, to some of the applications. So. Uh, fr from that perspective, there's definitely a, a requirement for uh, the data to be processed closer to the users, yeah. and uh, also within the boundaries, so that you know the data sovereignty is also is also maintained. In your presentation, which was very interesting, to be honest, uh, was very insightful for me as well. 
uh, quite technical, but that's, uh, that's part of the game. I realized that AI is a strong focus of Vertif, not only as a, from a buzzword perspective, but also from saying, look, we develop technologies which we can deploy, where we can have support and create a future-proven environment. Can you tell us a bit more what makes it so specific compared to the previous setup? Sure. So uh, when it comes to AI, and you know, as, as I mentioned in my presentation, the compute requirements for the AI servers and the high-performance computing uh, servers, you know, and for those large lear learning models and the inter inferences what are required in AI, yeah. the compute requirements are very different. Yeah. Uh, the standard servers which are required for the enterprise grid, you know, typically taking up to 5, 6, 10 kilowatt per rack are no longer used. So when it is like, you know, the AI uh, applications are under, the AI workloads are very highly demanding in terms of the power. Mm -hmm. and when they're demanding in terms of power, the, also the cooling paradigm is completely yeah. different. You know, yeah. with the moment the rack densities go across beyond 30, 40 kilowatt uh, per rack, the liquid cooled systems become more prominent to, to, to reject the heats out of these uh, systems. And when, when you mentioned about Vertiv and why it is important for us is, is you know, because uh, us being one of the leading infrastructure providers for data centers worldwide, mm -hmm. and uh, also one of the pioneers when it comes to precision cooling systems, even when, when it comes to liquid cooling systems, uh, we have partnered uh, with uh, right from the chip manufacturers and also even from the universities and research level to uh, collaborate with them and also develop uh, the cooling systems which are going to be you know uh, in 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 line with what the chip manufacturers are doing okay because the chip manufacturers can support uh, develop the chips if there's a supporting critical infrastructure mm -hmm. available to it so that way the partnerships that we have done with the likes of nvidia and, and intel you know which are which are all in public domain like so those are yeah. really helping us to Predict what is required uh, for the chip manufacturers and be ahead of the be ahead of the curve. So as I can hear, AI brings also kind of a disruption from a technology perspective. So it means you create probably new standards, or the legacy business or the legacy standards have to change. Well, uh, the, the the there is a shift of uh, shift in the paradigm in terms of how you design the data center, how how it is you know being ready for scaling up for the AI workloads, because as I mentioned, the AI workloads even in terms of power are very demanding, yeah. and it is more demanding on the cooling side because you know uh, the the designs which are which were done even two years back, and if they're not implemented and if they are not considering the the AI workloads, then then that that uh, like that. That makes the operators and uh, the, the manufacturers really think that are we doing the right yeah. uh, approach here. So you're excited for the future? Yes, definitely. The future, the, the future seems exciting, and uh, like you know, in some developed markets, the demand is really uh, through the roof. Mm. Okay, and that is as as evident from the demand uh, that that you know uh, th that that is happening with the hyperscalers investing in the AI facilities. Uh, in North America, in parts of Europe, and also in parts of uh, like Asia and, and, and Middle East. Uh, we are yet to see those real demands uh, on AI workloads to come into Africa, but I think you know we are waiting for uh, that day uh, sooner or later. Some some markets will have it earlier than, than most of the other markets. Maybe markets like South Africa, Morocco are, are uh, a bit in advanced discussions to have uh, AI workloads there. So yeah, it seems, seems it's exciting new world. So, so we can say that AI is also an accelerator for the industry to raise the necessary awareness of the importance of this sector. Definitely. So, so the AI is going to be definitely an accelerator, and also uh, what one of the one of the things like key things that is that is going to uh, impact here is also on the available uh, skill set. Okay, because with AI servers, with the AI workloads, the the power systems, the cooling systems, which will be required to support the systems are uh, going to be uh, not, not the general uh, systems that we have been using for. So what if we are already like, you know, doing uh, investments into uh, having local training centers and, you know, uh, getting our partner network and the, uh, the local teams prepared for, uh, prepared for, you know, implementing and supporting the uh, installations which are running the AI factories. All right. It was very insightful. Thanks, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. That was Tech Africa News from the International Data Center Day here in Nairobi. You can find more on techafricanews.com.